everyone, welcome back to my channel. Another month has bitten the dust and I have some favorites. The past couple of months I have done like a face of the month because I really have had a look that I just kept going back to time and time again during those months. I changed it up a lot. I feel like this eye look was something I did a lot when I did eyeshadow because I tended to not do eyeshadow a lot during May, which I have talked about in the past couple of videos. But I did have a few products that stuck out to me and I really wanted to do my top five of favorites of May, but there's six. I just couldn't, actually there's seven. One is kind of a combined favorite. I just couldn't keep it down. So let's go ahead and talk about skincare first because I do have one brand new skincare favorite. This is actually an SPF. It just launched this month. Dermatology came out with their Matte Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. I'm gonna be the first to tell you, I did not love, actually I really didn't like their physical tinted moisturizer. And the Universal Tinted Moisturizer, which is I believe a hybrid of chemical and physical, was okay, but it was a little too glowy on me. So I was very excited when they came out with this matte version and I love it. I will cut away to me applying this today. I have this on today. Now, keep in mind, this is the first time that I have tried it over a moisturizer. I have been using this as my moisturizer and SPF in one. So it does look a little glowy because I had that extra moisture on. It doesn't look very matte when I apply it. I do apply six to seven pumps of this and I apply it in two layers. But I am also going to cut away to once this had settled in about 30 minutes later. And you can see I'm not near as glowy as I was when I first applied it. I don't know that I have a preference of whether or not I apply this over moisturizer or not. It works great either way. If you have oily skin or combo skin, you're not gonna need another moisturizer under this. If you have more normal to dry skin or dry skin, don't be scared of the fact that it says matte. Really, that is just signifying that it's not gonna be a super glowy sunscreen. It is not a suck you dry type of matte. This is a 12% zinc oxide and a 7.5% octanoxate. Again, I've really been enjoying this. They sent this to me about a week before it launched, so I've used it multiple times. It works great under makeup. It works great alone. I love using this underneath a powder foundation. And even though it's tinted, I don't find it to be a coverage type of tint. And you probably could have seen that in the demo. It's not going to substitute a foundation for me. It's just tinted enough to where it's not gonna leave a white cast from the zinc oxide, at least on me but I have really been enjoying this. And most definitely out of their three sunscreens, this is by far my favorite. Future me popping in to let you know that I forgot to talk about the fact that this particular product does contain ferment. I was a little skeptical, actually a lot skeptical, let's be real. It is Saccharomyces ferment, which doesn't give me as much trouble as lactobacillus or galactomyces, but it still does. So I have to be careful using products with ferment, as I've said a kajillion times before. I did use this three days in a row and did see bumps forming. I then took two days off and they went away. So while I love this product, it's just not something that I can use every single day consecutively for a long period of time, or I will respond negatively to the ferment. I have four makeup products and I have all of them on today. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is brand new to me this month and it is the YSL All Hours Hyper Finish Powder. I also got the Hyper, Hyper, was it Hyper Finish or Hyper Bronze, Bronzer. I have that on today, really love that one. I love their quads, but this is the one that I feel like out of everything stuck out the most to me. I have it on today over my Urban Decay Face Bond, which I've also been loving. It just, is so pretty and non-powder like. If you're someone who likes the benefits of using a powder to set a foundation, meaning taking away some of the tackiness, helping with the transfer, helping with the longevity of the foundation, but you don't like the look of powders on your skin, this is definitely one to look at. You can layer it up to give more of a set and it's going to look a little more powdery, but I have quite a bit on today 
and I used a hydration spray at the end and I don't feel like my skin looks overly powdered, but I also can touch it and not feel any tackiness from my foundation, no matter what foundation I use under this. I really like it. I'm in the shade number two and you can't even see the S that well in the YSL because of how much I have been using it. So definitely a favorite of mine. The next two I actually got in May as well. The last one is something I've loved for a while. This is the mascara I have on today. I've used this in, I think my playing with new makeup video. This is from Swede and it is their cloud mascara in dark brown. I love a brown mascara, love a brown mascara. This one actually comes off almost black. I mean, I don't feel like you can really determine that that's a brown mascara. It has, one of my least favorite type of wands, which is like a plastic bristle, but it's very lengthening. It gives more length than volume, which is pretty par for the course for me with these type of wands. But the, the wear is what I love so much. I love the way it makes my lashes look, but it wears like a tubing mascara and a waterproof mascara, meaning it does not budge throughout the day. But it's not technically a tubing mascara because when I take it off, it doesn't come off in tubes but it's way easier to remove than a waterproof mascara. And I mean, I love the packaging, but so far so very good on this. I've been using it since May 12th. I always put a little sticker on when I opened products so I know when to throw them out because I have so much. And I've really been using it, I would say 80% of the time since then. So really like that. I had mentioned ordering the Miracle Powder. I also ordered one of their blushes and I believe it's coming in today. So be on the lookout for my thoughts on those because I'm very excited to try them. Another new product to me this month is from By Terry and it is their Brightening CC Luminizer. I ordered this from Derm Store in preparation for their summer sale, which I believe today might be the last day, the day this goes up. I love this stuff. It's what I have on today. It is so, so natural. I think out of all the liquid and cream highlights I have, this is by far the most natural one. It is really more liquid. It comes in a black, a blush, a brush every single video, y'all. There's got to be something I mess up on in every single video. It comes in a brush applicator and you just click up a little product. Be sure to only click it up once. If not, you will end up with some on your vanity. And then just brush a little bit on the cheeks. You can use your fingers to blend it out. You can use a brush. I use this in my summer base video. I have been using it every day since. Really, really pretty. So if you're someone who feels like they can't pull off a highlighter because they don't want anything accentuating the skin that's underneath it, but love that really luminous look, definitely want to check into because there is no shimmer or glitter or anything. It just gives this beautiful sheen to the skin. And lastly for makeup, the lip gloss I am wearing. Again, this one is not new. I have loved the City Lips plumping lip glosses for a while now, but I have not been able to stop using Pink Nude this month, which is what I have on right now. It is the only thing I have on. Y'all, these are by far my longest lasting lip glosses that I have ever tried, that are in my collection, that have once been in my collection, that are probably out on the market. I just can't imagine something lasting longer than this on the lips. I had Tokyo Kiss on the other day, and I made myself a mental note to remember when I applied it and see how it wore throughout the day. And five hours after I applied it, I could still feel remnants of it on my lips. Now, was it as opaque as it was when I first applied it? No, I had eaten. I had lived, I had talked. I mean, I wasn't sitting on the couch not speaking or making expressions for five hours. So it wasn't exactly like it was when I applied it, but there was still product on my lips. I love a lot of the colors, a lot of the colors in this line. But again, Pink Nude is just the one that I have been reaching for the most this month because it is just my kind of color shiny. These are plumping lip glosses and I can, can get a little bit of a plumpness from them, but they are not uncomfortable. If I feel anything, it's for three minutes tops and then nothing else. Like I don't feel it for the length of time I have. 
definitely a favorite not only this month every month i tend to pick a shade and wear that throughout the month and then finally i'm going to talk about my very obvious fragrance favorite this month and this is where i kind of combine two because it's actually a layering combo and i'm going to wear it again today i waited till i was on camera to apply it because i can't stop with this I mean, I think it's going on like day eight in a row of wearing this, which is insane because I love fragrance and I love to change up my fragrances. I have a lot of options, but I keep going back to this combo. It is Ormond Jane Ormond Woman, which was the one scent that told me maybe I don't hate all green fragrances <laughs> because I do not dislike anything about this fragrance and it is definitely a green fragrance but it is also extremely extremely unique extremely signature scent worthy this is something you can wear every day all seasons it is so good it is so good and there is a signature dna to ormond jane fragrances where everything has a little bit of a similarity and I love that because it means that I will be able to blind smell something and know that it's Ormond Jane because it has their signature to it. Now, one of my very favorites recently, and y'all, this might end up being my favorite so far of the entire line, and I have some strong favorites from Ormond Jane. This is the Veni de Afriques, I think is how you pronounce it. I have a travel size of this. I'm almost halfway through. This is... So good. I had mentioned in, I think it was Alive with Abby, how this smells so nostalgic to me and I still have yet to pinpoint what it is. This is gonna be one of those, I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, a light bulb goes off. Oh, that's what it smells like. But so far I've not been able to determine it. I just know that when I spray it, it brings me back to something. And it is, to me, mostly vanilla a powdery iris vanilla it has orris root in it so it's more of like a buttery powder a little bit more creamy a little bit heavier it's not like baby powder at all with vanilla and that signature ormond jane scent and it is yeah i'm gonna go ahead and say it so far out of all the ones that i've smelled it is my favorite ormond jane and this one oh this one will be second bukara would be third Securo would be fourth, and so on and so on. But so far, these are my top two, and layered together, they are divine. Divine. Multiple compliments gotten from this, but it is not a knock-you-down type of scent. It is not overwhelming. It's not going to precede me into a room. But if I get close to someone, I tend to have them comment on me smelling good when I wear this combo. So those are my favorites for the month of May. As always, I will have everything listed and linked down below. Let us know what your favorites were down in the comment section below. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.